So apparently he's 18 and the other guy is 19. Друзья, я, я, Честно, я... я смотрю на него, и мне смешно становится, реально. Он ведет себя как ребенок, маленький ребенок. Хазбула, давай, не позори нас. Хазбула, не позори нас. Успокойся, брат. А что там мне говорю? Хазбула, по-братски, что ты? Слышишь? Что ты сейчас ты позоришь ты Дагестан. Эй, 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 эй. What's up guys, Derek, more plates from dates.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about the 18 year old phenom Mini Khabib. This is Hasbula Magomedov, Magomedov, age, net worth, and disease. So this article published recently by Robert Mann on uh, ladbible.com outlines why this 18 year old looks you know like a child baby faced appearance but he is in fact 18 years old so i thought i found this very interesting because it's obviously intertwines very closely with some of the medical discussions we've had um related to growth hormone deficiency optimizing growth as a teenager you know all kinds of things that go on with uh maturation and development and whatnot and this individual in particular is on the polar opposite side of the spectrum of being deficient in something that is otherwise going to propel you through your, you know, adolescence and going into um, teenagehood and building up your infrastructure to be an actual adult. And I don't know, it just like intertwines very closely with some of the stuff we've talked about. And I found it very interesting and obviously a very mainstream topic at this point because the guy is, uh, you know, hanging out with Khabib and whatnot. So unless you've been living under a rock, you would almost certainly would have almost certainly seen Hasbula Megamedov on your social media feeds, but who is he and what is he known for? At a first glance, Hasbula, one of the most talked about people on social media right now, might have you believe that he is a child due to his baby face appearance, but he's in fact 18 years old. He became a cult hero in the MMA community and gave, gained the nickname Mini Khabib after he recreated a video of Khabib Nurga, <laughs> Nurga, Nurga, holy fuck, Nurmagomedov's iconic UFC weigh-in. Hezbula gained the nickname Mini Khabib after he recreated a video, his pre-fight press conference alongside fellow social media personality Abdu Rozik 17 is one of his most popular videos online. The rumored MMA fight between Hezbollah and Abdu, which was organized by Chechen MMA fighter Ashab Tamev, is said to have taken place in May. Video of the fight, however, has not been released amid a possible backlash with the Sports Association of Little People of Russia slamming it for being unethical. Let's see what this is here. Посмотрим, на что способен Хазбик лицом к лицу. I'm gonna put this in, in a full screen, one sec. <laughs> Holy shit, he has like 2 million subscribers. Я знаю, что многие смотрят нас без подписки. Пожалуйста, не поленитесь. Прямо сейчас подпишись на этот YouTube канал Асхаб Тамаев. И как наберется тут полтора миллиона подписчиков, я за СНГ. Ассаму алейкум, дорогие друзья. Меня зовут Магомед Ухашло Магомед Мне 18 лет. Я из Хушета. У меня цель Павит Абдуроз. Даже один килограмм играет в конференции. Ты меня тоже обиделся. Почти любые. Dude, 13 million views. I just noticed. Holy shit. У кого есть контракт, они рекламируют. Но здесь важно то, что не я лично рекламирую, а мой менеджер или моя команда. А материться, а материться Хазбик лично. Тише я разговариваю. Тише я Подожди, 
Ты ребенок, Ай. слышишь, ты ребенок. Хазбула, по-братски, а? Я тебе... Ай! Я... Хазбула. Ну-ка, подойди, подойди. Хазбула. Ты я так много разговариваешь, подойди. Давай, подойди, я посмотрю. Покойся, брат. So apparently she's 18, and the other guy is 19. Друзья, я, я, Честно, я... я смотрю на него, и мне смешно становится, реально. Он ведет себя как ребенок, маленький ребенок. Хазбула, давай, не позори нас. Хазбула, не позори нас. Успокойся, брат. А что ты мне говорю? Хазбула, по-братски, что ты? Слышишь? Ты сейчас позоришь Дагестан, ты это понимаешь? Ты позоришь. Отпусти его, отпусти. Что он скажет? Что он сделает? Эй, эй, эй. Отпусти его. Что он скажет? Что он сможет сделать? Хазбула, по Что ты сможешь сделать? Хазбула, по Слышишь? Эй, 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 сюда иди, иди пацаны, сюда, я сказал. Эй, эй, пацаны, пацаны. Я с тобой сейчас во время Рамазана разговариваю по хорошему. Я сейчас эй, тебя на кусочки порежу, понял? Эй, пацаны, иди сюда. Пацаны, иди сюда. Пацаны, иди сюда. Собака. Это означает собака, ты понял? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Nonetheless, Hezbula has still remains one of the most recognizable personalities on social media today. Here's everything you need to know about him. So he is a blogger from Dagestan who's been posting content to Instagram and since November 2020, been going before going viral on TikTok in 2021. More specifically, he became an overnight internet sensation following the news of his fight with Abdu Rozik. A row erupted over the fight, which was said to be a contest between two teenagers with dwarfism and it has also been condemned by the Sports Association of Little People of Russia for being Unethical. The fight of the century. Everything is on the line. Um, how old is he? Despite his baby face appearance, he is 18 years old. How tall is he? He is one meter tall or three foot three inches in height. It's also suggested that he weighs around 16 kilos. What is his net worth? <laughs> Who the fuck? That's like so specific. However, with his newfound fame, the 18-year-old's wealth, wealth is almost certainly expected to rise significantly. What disease does Hasbula Magomedov have? Although it has not been officially confirmed, it is believed that Hasbula has a form of dwarfism. The genetic disorder, disorder gives him childlike characteristics such as stunted growth and a high-pitched voice. So, as far as I know, this is like a sweeping generalization to say like you are a certain height or like under a certain cutoff, therefore you are you know, a dwarf essentially, but there are of many causes for dwarfism and they can result in different kind of hormonal profiles where it's not just, you know, deficient in, it can be deficient in many hormones or just in growth hormone or like one of the causes, for example, of dwarfism is growth hormone deficiency. And that's, you know, specifically deficient in somatropin, which is um, going to lead to, like in many cases, you'll see um, dwarfs that are like, clearly like have gone through maturation and have kind of like gone through puberty they just did not grow the you know like infrastructure of an adult by growing in height properly but they still developed like masculine features got facial hair voices deep in stuff like that and a lot of that will kind of like stem back up into your pituitary output and whatnot and what's going on with your hypothalamus and all kinds of negative feedback and or if things are even functioning correctly to begin with and can lead to an array of different hormone profiles. And for Hasbula, it seems, you know, the fact that he not only is, you know, so short in stature, but in addition to that, also has like a high pitched voice has not seemed to progress past, you know, like, you know, toddler status essentially, clearly has not had significant androgenicity in his body. It seems like he is missing not just growth hormone, but I would speculate low gonadotropin output or non-responsive or from those gonadotropins or a myriad of different things but i assume his hormone profile is a lot more broad spectrum low in many different cr critical things for undergoing 
you know, adult development. So I imagine backfilling just growth hormone might not exactly, you know, like fix him, for example, or at the right time of his life, having, you know, growth hormone supplementation and mega dosing it, you know, the, the doses of GH to give to GH deficient children is like pretty fucking astronomical when you actually look at it. But I suspect that there is more at play here. Like it's not uh, like you, I'm sure you've seen, you know, like TV shows with dwarfs or like, you know, there's YouTubers that are dwarfs. Like there's a lot of individuals who have like, you know, adult voices. They've matured and gone through that process in their teenage years and have become like, you know, full blown adults yet still being like substantially shorter than the average in the population and being under that cutoff where they're classified as a dwarf. And, you know, it puts them in that, uh, you know, likely, well, obviously there are different causes of dwarfism and some of them are like, uh, you know, um, genetic predispositions from just inheriting um, like problematic, I think um, certain alleles that can be problematic from a genetic standpoint, but also being GH deficient, but simultaneously having adequate levels of other hormones needed for development. Obviously the final end product is going to be a substantially different adult than, you know, Hasbula, for example. And that's why a lot of dwarfs, you know, seem like adults versus Hasbula is still kind of like a child in a teenage you know, actually chronologically, he's actually like a teenager at 18 years old. So, you know, I speculate there's more than meets the eye here than just GH deficiency. Let's see. So what did he become uh, famous for? He's from Dagestan, same place as Khabib. Pair have since struck up a friendship and are often seen in videos with one another on TikTok. Has Bula's videos which see him pretending to fight children. <laughs> Has seen him become a famous name and face around the world, even striking up a friendship with Kanye West in recent times. Doctor explains has Bula's rare genetic condition that makes him look young and old. Okay, well, let's, I guess I probably should have read this part. Let's see, Grow doctor believes the fighter has a rare genetic condition called growth hormone deficiency. Dr. Karan Raj has taken a TikTok to explain how Hezbollah and his arch nemesis, <laughs> Abu Rozek, were born with the condition that happens when the brain's pituitary gland, which is responsible for producing most of the body's hormones, can't produce growth hormone. This is the truth behind Hezbollah. Despite his small and childlike voice, he's actually 18 years old. Both he and Abdu Rozik have a similar condition called growth hormone deficiency, which stunts physical growth. Growth hormone is produced by the pituitary gland deep in the brain. Whilst this condition can be caused by tumors of the pituitary gland, most of the time the cause is unknown. If diagnosed early, it can be treated with daily human growth hormone injections. Lionel Messi had this when he was a kid, but he was diagnosed at age 10 and treated. Okay, so you mentioned it's uh, GH deficiency, which... Um... You know, I think there's probably more to it than meets the eye. Like I said, like, I, I imagine he's just speculating too. I can't imagine he just like, I'm surprised he's just saying flat out, like this is what they have, unless he somehow knows. When a dwarf is 18 years old and has such a high voice and is still basically a toddler, like to our perception, I imagine there is a lack of other pituitary output. It's not just somatropin. I believe it is lack of gonadotropins and or, you know, um, whatever thing is going on in his HPTA is also deficient as well to prevent him from undergoing sufficient masculinization. Like it's pretty clear he has not had significant exposure to testosterone, DHT. There are other things missing than just GH in this equation. But like he said, catching this early enough with, you know, proper supplementation of exogenous hormones could have, you know, rectified things and will potentially not made him like as, you know, 100% normal necessarily, but it would have at least, you know, had him on the right track to actually progress through a normal, you know, like pubertal development phase, sort of kind of like self-induced, like manual administration of what you need to kind of go through that process. And yeah, Lionel Messi, a very, very notable case of um, growth hormone deficiency, and he would have ended up being um, I believe a dwarf as well. If he hadn't supplemented with growth hormone, that is another video that's actually on my to-do list. Let me know if you guys want to see that about his use of uh, pharma grade GH and how I believe it was even paid for by uh, the club that was like scouting him out or whatever. So I could be wrong on that, but I have to double check. It's on my to-do list though. But um, yeah, without the pharma GH, he would have been fucked. So Lionel Messi's literal career is based on the fact that he built a proper adult infrastructure on high dose GH, interestingly enough. The condition is also known as dwarfism or pituitary dwarfism and makes children appear short in stature, but with normal body proportions. GHD can present, be present when a baby is born or can develop later. Dr. Raj explains how medicine and science has yet to come up with a decent answer about how or why GHD occurs. However, he did state that it can be treated if it is addressed early enough. Children with the conditions can receive GH injections to encourage their bodies to grow larger and longer. Let's see, the injections have to be administered every day and effects can be seen around three to four months later. This is exactly what happened 
to Lionel Messi. He was diagnosed at 10 years old. Treatment can be very expensive. That is true. Thankfully for the wor world-renowned footballer. Man, maybe I should just fucking scroll down before I say shit because it's already written out for me. Thankfully for the world-renowned footballer, Barcelona paid for his injections when he was recruited by the academy a couple of years after his diagnosis. As Bula has amassed more than 316,000 followers on Instagram, 17,500 on TikTok, and everyone is waiting for the announcement of his fight with Abdi Rozik. At this stage, the bout is hypothetical, but it's expected to be organized by MMA professional Ask Sab Tamev. The head of Russia's Dwarf Athletic, okay, I think I've heard them say five times now it's unethical. It'd be a laughing show. Um, let's see, I don't know what this says. I don't know who's going to win. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Speaking to Gazeta.ru, Podpalnia Pod said, it's not even like a show fight. They get paid a lot of money. It's a show to make people laugh. There's nothing serious about this. This isn't sport. This is unethical or wrong from my point of view. It seems to be the only... On the one hand, it can be correct and beautiful if martial arts among small people are made a Paralympic sport. It could be judo, karate, and people will understand that this is a serious sport, serious performances, and not some kind of laughing show. What do you guys think? Do you think they should be able to do this? Like, you know, it's an opportunity for them to make money and people are to be entertained. Is this like, you know, making a mockery of dwarfs? Does it matter that dwarfs, you know, are doing something that could have people, you know, laughing at them for, and it reflects poorly on the rest of the population. Like, I don't know, like there's a lot of weird shit going on lately. There's like YouTubers fighting, you know, all time best boxers, like YouTube versus fucking like phenom legendary boxers making millions of dollars. If two, you know, guys with dwarfism want to fight each other and people are gonna pay for it, like why should they not be allowed to, you know? I don't know, what do you guys think? Um, drop them down in the comments. I think that is the end of the article. So from the point of view of the sports career growth of these guys, there are no prospects. Um, yeah, so that is the end of the story. To me, this is very compelling because it's not like he is a traditional, like when you, I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of dwarfs, like I said, on like, you know, TV shows, um, you know, some of the reality shows and whatnot. You know, there's some YouTubers, like I said, and in general, the majority that I have seen have indeed been like, fully developed adults and when i say developed i mean from like a you know like maturity standpoint from a androgenicity you know fully masculinized and or feminized standpoint but none that are like growth hormone deficient and like entirely androgen and potentially estrogen deficient as well where they end up looking like a kid like perpetually into their late teen years so very very interesting case and um should be interesting to see if this guy blows up if he ends up getting medical intervention and then what happens to him you know kind of doing this as a uh you know later in life because like for example guys with micro penises i know this is like it sounds like a total tangent but guys with micro penises essentially in the majority of cases from what i've seen our guys who were essentially pseudo hermaphrodites in their teen years did not have enough exposure to DHT during their puberty phase, ended up with lackluster development, and then later, if they ended up exposing themselves to the adequate amount of DHT, they like there's a reason why HCG, topical, you know, like scrotal DHT application, shit like this can actually cause like penis growth in guys with micro penises, like big gains. But that same application won't necessarily work for a guy who's fully grown already because they've already kind of like maxed out their genetic potential. But for a guy who's never actually made it to their genetic potential, applying these drugs later, it doesn't necessarily mean that they won't, you know, like significantly expedite things and kind of like try and make up for lost time and kind of like push you through that puberty phase. Like we even saw the, uh, the case of the guy who didn't go through puberty, the 28 year old, like uh, 16 year old or whatever it was. I did a video on him too. He was on the doctor's show and he ended up needing TRT to kind of like progress him and kind of like develop his uh, uh, male genitalia fully, as far as I recall, and um, including his voice and a lot of different things that did not develop fully. In his case, it was a little interesting because he had mainly dysfunction when it came to um, androgen output and getting through puberty properly, but he had such a lack of estrogen that then the growth hormone and everything else that's going on concurrently kind of pushed him to a point where he almost resembled like castrati type um, infrastructure in his body. Like he had like poor bone mineral density. He had, you know, disproportionately longer limbs, if I recall correctly. Like these are all flagship things you see in the castrati individuals who were castrated 
uh, before going through puberty to maintain, sustain their angelic singing voices, but then as a result of the lack of testosterone production and the subsequent lack of estrogen to kind of cause the um, epiphyseal plate closure, they end up growing disproportionately long um, bones and shit, but the quality of the bones is so poor. They have like osteoporosis in their early 20s. They don't lose any hair though. Very interesting uh, to dig into. So for this, this is not, you know, castrati. This is like totally different. This is growth hormone deficient as well as androgen deficient from what I can tell. So very interesting, uh, like broad spectrum mix of endocrine issues here. And we shall see if his uh, exposure, you know, getting some money, like if anything, this well, why not let the guy make some fucking money and then maybe he can help himself medically, you know? Maybe that might be a good outcome and like a happy ending to this whole story, you know? And it's not just it's not just a mockery thing. It's like, you know, potentially he might be able to help himself. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hopefully you learned something, enjoyed it, thought it was entertaining, whatever. Uh, any, <laughs> like any of those would be good. Uh, like helps the algorithm. Subscribe, comment, helps the algorithm. Much appreciated when you guys do. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video descrip description below. My TRT clinic, all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Recommended lab tests and diagnostics. Stay on top of your health as well as check your hormones to see if they're dialed in. Um, and get oversight from high quality doctors. I've vetted myself personally to assess your hormonal status and intervene if appropriate and or address lifestyle, you know, factors that could otherwise be optimized before haphazardly jumping into hormone replacement, which is something that a lot of other clinics that are cookie cutter will just throw you on in order to make their margin on the medications rather than actually giving you high quality care and actually justifying the, you know, markups that they're charging you. Like you want to actually get high quality care and interpretation of your labs and your current status from the high quality doctors rather than just getting, oh, here's your fucking TRT, an all this, that, get out of here. So that is in the video description if you want to check it out, as well as Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, Pre-Workout Formulas, I Design Myself From Scratch, my recommended diet model for those who are looking to pack on as much muscle while simultaneously be mindful of sports performance, as well as sleep hygiene and gut health, hitting your micronutrients, not just your macros. Anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.